We're good, right? I'll just bring you guys back so I can see you. Um, so this is what we're talking about today. We're talking about building uh, profitable community businesses, which um, in my mind, Dreamers and Doers is the best example of this. So uh, to give you an example of another meta experience, like you're experiencing a profitable community business as you're learning about it. So um, I'm excited to, to do that with you. Um, so before we get started, like we're all always on Zoom now and it's easy to kind of think of yourself as like a flat 2D screen. So just take a moment, like I'm in my living room, welcome to my living room, like be in your space, like embody yourself as a 3D being um, and just kind of get ready to kind of be here. Um, this is gonna be a pretty hands-on session. Um, I will drop in links to worksheets that you can do as we're going through this. Um, so if you are able, to like really be here and really go through the exercises while we're here. Um, I'll take your questions at the end and you should be able to uh, figure some stuff out while we're, we're here. So I recommend that you, if you can, uh, take the time to do the work while we're here. Um, okay, here we go. So just to ground us in like what we're doing here, um, I'd love for you to take a minute and think about a memorable community experience from your past. And ideally this is something from when you were really young and it can be a positive or a negative experience. So think about when you were young and maybe you played a sport, maybe you went to like a family uh, reunion of sorts. Um, maybe it's your experience of being with people in your immediate family and what that felt like. And just think about it for a minute and um, I'll take like just one or two shares um, of what that experience is. Um, I'd love to hear your, your community stories. Um, so I'll just wait for a minute and then I'll take a couple of shares. And if you're, if you're ready and you wanna share, you can either raise your hand physically or raise your hand in, in Zoom or put it in the chat and let me know. Okay, anyone ready to share? Tana, I went to the same summer camp for nine years, lots of memories, but mostly just reconnecting with the same people every year. That's awesome. Michelle said, winning an award for social outreach while being in grad school. Uh, Katrin said, I was thinking about camp too. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, my memory was about camp too. Does anyone want to share the camp story? Like something specific that you remember? Maybe it was like the last day of camp, the first day of camp, like any story that you can remember, any friend friendship stories from that time? I'd love to hear one. Four H camp, Bob Cooper, lacrosse team in high school, and miss all the fun hangouts at each other's house. Cool. Um, so, yeah, another comment. I just the fear of going and not knowing anyone, but making friends really quickly through the activities. Yep, that's a great point. 
Um, the reason I asked this question at the beginning is because um, none of us have lived the same life and none of us have related to friendships and community in the same way, which means that none of us are gonna build the same community because whatever community you build, whoever you've been as a friend, whoever you've been within communities, you're bringing that into the people that you're gathering. So thinking about these memories, thinking about like your approach to belonging, your approach to connection, um, that is super important to however you end up gathering people. So your, your story, your little uh, camp experiences, and even the negative stuff, like even when uh, you were left out of a game or your family moved and you had uh, an experience of feeling that lack of belonging, all that stuff plays into the way that you gather people. So it's important to kind of ground yourself in your story um, before you start connecting other people and figuring out how to build community for others. Um, so about me, um, so my own story of belonging, I wrote in my introduction in, in Dreamers and Doors, um, like the main like plot point in my life that kind of brought me to like really think about connection and belonging was uh, moving countries. So moving from Brazil to the US when I was 10. Um, and it just, it was a reset in my life obviously. And it just gave me like a different view. I had to, even as like a, a, a really young little girl in fourth grade, like trying to speak English, trying to figure out all these things. It gave me this like, oh, if I zoom out, I can kind of understand how people are connecting to each other. And I can kind of see um, how I can like uh, insert myself in conversations and like, oh, this, word's me this word means this, this person is friends with that person. Um, so that's when I started becoming a community builder. That's when I started to understand connections. Obviously at the time, I didn't call myself that or know that, but um, a lot of what I do now connects back to that time. Um, anyway, since then, um, when I started working, um, I've, 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 uh, I started my career in sales and marketing, and then I moved into tech and I moved into, uh, building my own businesses. And then through the whole time I was building community and doing community stuff. Um, so what I do now is really like the really cozy center of the Venn diagram of all these different things that I've done. Um, so, uh. That's who I am and that's what I do now. And someone put in the chat, D&D &D has been a memorable experience for me. That's awesome. Yay, Geisha. Um, so what's a community? This is a question that just like I was saying, like what your experiences are in your life um, is what you bring to your community. Um, this is another example of that. All of us are gonna define community a little bit differently for ourselves. Um, so I'm gonna tell you what my, what my definition is, but just like everything else I'll tell you here or ever, uh, question that for yourself. Like my, my goal is to give you like one potential way of thinking about something, but really to encourage you to bring who you are and what you think about it into your community. So. How I define community is a group of people who come together to nurture their own and one another's growth. Um, I see that a lot in Dreamers and Doers. Um, I think it's, it's a place where you come to celebrate when you reach the milestone. It's a place where you come to ask for help so that you can move up. Um, and a lot of communities have this in common and they do it in different ways. Um, but I think that it's, um, it's a main thing that communities have in common. And this definition is actually, um, I derived it from a bell hooks uh, definition of love. So at the center of community and at the center of uh, what we do, I think is love. And that's where this definition comes from. What we're here to talk about is community businesses and what I, I define that as an organization that makes money from facilitating connections that help people grow. Um, 
and it's tricky, right? Because you're introducing money into love and into an, an, an equation that's supposed to be like pure and not, um, not polluted by money, let's say. But um, the, the way I see it is we, what we value, we pay for. And that's the way that our society works. And for a long time, building community has been something that has not been valued. Community managers make like one of the least amount of money out of everyone at a company. Um, it's not a job, it's not a profession, it's not an industry that's respected in the way that it should be. Um, because I believe it's really important to um, help people connect to each other. It's, it's a core human need to belong. And um, so that's why I think it's, um, it's not an oxymoron to bring business into the equation of community. I actually think um, I've embraced it. And I think that building these kinds of businesses um, is really um, a way to change a lot in our society. Um, so anyway, now after all the preamble, let's get right to it. How are our community businesses making money? So I will give you what I think is Dreamers and Doers business model. So Dreamers and Doers helps ambitious and values-driven women entrepreneurs grow their businesses by providing visibility via PR opportunities and networking via a circle community. They find customers via referrals from members and make money by charging $130 a month for quarterly membership. I made this up, so it's not approved by anyone. This is just my impression as, as an outsider. Um, so this is what I see as like a, a business model story for Dreamers and Doers. And here's how that breaks down. So the yellow is the members, the green is the problem, the solution, uh, the channels that they use to bring members and their revenue. Um, and we'll, we'll break this down in a second. Um, just to give you a definition of the business model, the way I define it is that it's a story about how your business works and makes money. So as you saw in that example, that's like a really brief story of how Dreamers and Doers makes money and who they serve and what they do um, and all the pieces of their business. Um, and this is the, this is the, the formula for it. Um, let me, I forgot to put the worksheets in this chat. Um, you don't need them yet, but just so I don't forget. Um, so you can pick either, you can uh, do the worksheet by duplicating it on Notion, if you use Notion. Um, or you can, again, duplicate the Google Docs one um, and use that. Um, and it's, it's a, a worksheet to basically go through this for yourself um, and, and figure out what this is for your own business. Um, so I'm gonna give you some other examples of uh, communities that have different business models from Dreamers and Doers. So building a second brain is um, a really expensive course um, and a main, the reason why I think um, cohort-based courses are community businesses is because the reason they can be expensive is because of the community. People pay um, a lot of money for these courses because they get to meet a ton of people and the, um, the camaraderie that comes from learning something together and being in a cohort together. Um, so this is what I see as their business model. Uh, building, a second, look, building a second brain helps busy productivity nerds get organized and expand their creative output via cohort-based course and ongoing community. They find customers via referrals from members and make money by charging a one-time payment of $1,500 to $6,000 per student for the course. Um, and to give you an idea, this last time that they ran this course, there were 2,000 people going through it. Um, so they're a very profitable, very big business, um, and at the core of their business is community. Um, and I'm going to give you one more example of a very successful 
uh, community business that is not like a, a high-end one like this that has a, a very different business model. Um, and that's Nest Labs. Um, I'm not sure if anyone has heard of them. Um, and this is, they charge uh, $9 a month monthly or $49 a year. Um, and I'm in, I'm in this community. Um, they were one of the first uh, communities to really like uh, move to circle. Um, so there's a lot of, I, I learned a lot from being in that community too and how things are set up there. Um, but their business model is very different. So they help curious people interested in self-improvement find others to collaborate with by providing a platform to host events and connect via Circle community. They find customers from the Make For Mine newsletter list and they make money by charging $9 a month or $49 a year for membership. Um, so this one is one where they're going for volume, obviously. Um, so I think they have uh, like 3,000 people in the community paying like either $9 a month or $49 a year. And they, it grows pretty fast um, because the, the, the channel that they use is the newsletter and the newsletter is growing pretty fast. Um, so it's just another example of how you can structure it. Unlike Dreamers and Doers, they're not charging over $100 a month, but that means that actually their community experience is a lot more laid back. And it's not like Dreamers and Doers where there's constantly programming and there's a staff to support people. And um, there's Hannah and the, the team tagging different people and connecting you to people. It's much more of like a self-serve community. Um, so it's kind of the spectrum of membership communities. It can be more expensive and you get a lot and there's a lot included, um, or it can be something that's more of a, a place where uh, people know where they can go and get the information, but they're not um, feeling like they have to take advantage of it because they're paying so much for it. Um, okay, so now we're gonna go through each one of the different, um, different pieces of the business model story. And I'll talk through um, how to think about the different pieces. The idea here is for you to either write the, if you already have a, a, a community going, like write your current business model in this form and see the parts that are hard for you so that you can like figure out how to like solidify those pieces a little bit more. Um, so either do that, either write your current business model and like figure out the pieces where you need to tweak or write the business model that you want to work towards. Um, so if you don't yet have a, a community, what's a business model that's not too far in your future? So something like six to eight weeks from now, what's one that you can start out and, and build out? And so far, the examples that I shared are all um, later stage communities that have um, a lot of members and have been around a while. Um, but I'll share, I'll, um, I'll talk a little bit about how to address these different pieces if you're just getting started and you don't have an audience and you don't yet have uh, many members. Okay, let's talk about members. So who are your members? That's the first um, prompt there. Um, so the way I would start with this is to, um, if you have an idea for the community, um, guess who your members are gonna be first and then talk to those people and see if it feels like those would be your members. Um, so interview them and see if that's the right uh, people to start with. Um, as you're writing it in that business model story, um, it's helpful to think of it as an adjective plus the identity of the person. So for example, nerdy dog parents is what Sonali, who's also a Dreamers and Doers member, who's, who invited me to Dreamers and Doers, um, that's what her community uh, target. So they, they, that community is for nerdy dog parents. Um, so think about like what those two, three short phrase uh, of words would be for your members. Um, and right now you're just writing it down. The idea is to like get something out and then test it and see if you're right. Um, and I think like the most important thing with communities 
um, is really focusing on people who you like and not being too like strategic about it. Like, don't just like run all the numbers, figure out the ROI um, at the early stages and like always like just think about the people you like and the people you want to be surrounded by or the people you want to help. Um, it's a much better way to find who you're going to be able to build a community with um, than trying to be too strategic, especially at the early stages. Um, does anyone have any questions so far? You can put them into the chat. Um, I'll give you some time at the end of this section to like really write out your worksheet. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. So the second one is figuring out the problem that your community solves. Um, so this is really like uh, from talking to them, this will be um, really solidified for you. So, and it might not be what you expect. It might be something that's a little bit different than what you thought. Um, and your community, um, all communities are solving this general problem that people are looking for belonging and they're looking for connection. But when you're thinking about your business model, um, what are the more concrete problems that you can solve for members? So that when they're evaluating your community, they're like, this is a no brainer. Like for me, Dreamers and Doers, it's a no brainer because they offer visibility opportunities. They have a list of perks. Um, so it solves it. I can grow my business by being a part of Dreamers and Doers. It's very clear. Uh, that they can solve a problem for me. They can take me from where I am now to the next level. Um, and then I also get to like not be lonely as an entrepreneur. I get to be surrounded by people who are doing the same thing. Um, so brainstorm that for your people and think through what their problem is. Um, and then I wrote a few prompts here. Like usually people... Um, like problems flare up at a specific time. So what is the transition that people are going through that uh, gets them to invest in your community? So for me, for example, uh, Geisha mentioned it. A lot of people come to me when they're either starting a community or they're migrating their community from a different platform. So that's a transition point and that's a pain because they have to learn all these different things at one time and they need help at that time. So what is that for, for your community? Like what is the transition that they're going through? Maybe they're switching jobs. Maybe they just had a baby. Maybe they just got a puppy. What is the, what's the transition and how can you help solve that specific problem? And then your solution. So a lot goes to your solution. Um, okay, there's a question in the chat. Should this statement, uh, be listed on our community landing page somewhere? So the short answer to that is no. When you're filling this out, think of it as an internal document that nobody will ever see. Like you won't see, like this is not a marketing message. This is for you to help to, for you to figure out what you're doing with your business and with your community. So don't fill it out so that it sounds cute. Fill it out so that it tells you what you need to know. So make it super clear just for yourself. Um, and crafting your solution. So this is where a lot of your community experience comes in. And uh, this is where you make it really clear to your members and your potential members what they can expect when they join and what comes with the membership. So um, in a community, there's there are like many different ways that you can structure a community. So uh, what happens in the community platform? Uh, what kind of things can they expect? Can, do you have accountability groups that, you, that are uh, moderated or not moderated? Um, do you have small groups? Um, what kinds of events do you have? Do you have like a yearly conference? Um, all of these things that can clarify for people what you offer and what that experience is goes into your solution. Um, I think rituals are really important for a community. Um, and rituals are anything that you do repeatedly 
that has meaning. So the difference between a ritual and a routine is that a routine, you're just doing it. Um, you, you're just doing something repeatedly, but it's not, um, it doesn't have meaning and purpose behind it. A ritual does. So what are these rituals that you can create within the community um, that you can repeat either every month, every quarter, like every time you let new people in? Um, what do those look like for your community? All of that falls into your solution. <clears throat> Okay, so I get a lot of questions about, um, you know, how do I grow my community? A few people who signed up for this were asking about growth and how to get people um, into your community, especially if you're just getting started. Um, and you'll notice that the examples that I gave already were established communities where the new members are just coming from referrals. But obviously you need a big group of people in order for your main channel to be referrals. Um, so um, what I recommend if you're just getting started and you don't yet um, have a group to refer people and um, maybe you don't yet even have an audience like you're just kind of starting from scratch. Um, what I recommend is really focusing on what I call partnerships, which is like a loose definition for like getting yourself in front of other people's audience, which this is a perfect example of that. Um, I'm growing my community and I'm here speaking to a different community that could potentially be interested in what I'm offering. Um, so that is what I recommend if you're just getting started. Um, and then the other thing that I would think about if um, you're just launching a community is to launch with something very specific um, that you can charge for. So um, maybe it's like a challenge that um, kind of aligns with what your member goals are, um, but is a challenge that you can run for 30 days and then people stay within your community after the 30 days. Uh, maybe it's like a weekend retreat that you can launch um, and people can like very clearly picture what a weekend retreat, even if it's on Zoom would look like, like they're, they're, they're paying for like a specific experience um, and then they get the community access for a couple months. Um, that way you take some pressure off of the community, like being a big group of people from the start um, because you're offering something else um, that people can get value and you're launching with these two things kind of at the same time. Um, does that make sense? Any questions around that? And then the other thing to say about channels is that um, I really recommend sticking to one, maybe two, um, as your main channel where you're getting new people to your community, especially in the beginning, especially if you don't have a team. Um, it's just, you'll do better doing the same thing uh, multiple times than, um, you know, being on Instagram and also posting on Twitter and also having a newsletter and also having like a YouTube channel, like try not to stretch yourself too thin, like pick a couple, um, pick one or two channels where you can like really show up consistently and improve in those channels. Um, and again, this is another uh, element of your business model that you can test. So if you're writing a newsletter for a while and you've tried everything and it's not growing, maybe it's time to, to like change this part of your business model and move to a different channel and see if partnerships will work for you. Um, so yeah, something in the chat. Yeah, thoughts about transitioning from a free to paid membership. Um, I'll definitely, I'll talk about that at the end um, in the Q and A section, um, but that's a question I get a lot. So I definitely wanna talk about that too. Um, okay, so then the last piece of your business model story is the revenue model. So uh, what should you charge for? 
Um, and this means like maybe you're not necessarily charging for your membership. Maybe you're charging for uh, like the online course example that I gave. Those people aren't actually like paying for the community. Um, like what they're paying for is supposedly the online course. So what is the thing that people are coming for to, to pay for? Um, that's what that first question means. Um, and then how much will you charge? And like, what is the cadence? Like how often and how will you do that? If you're just getting started, I suggest that you start at least quarterly with your community so that people, um, like if you do like pay monthly from the beginning, you're, you're just not gonna have enough momentum by the end of the first month. And you don't want people to be evaluating whether they should cancel after just 30 days. Um, so start with like at least a quarterly um, period where it's like join this thing and get access to the community for three months um, so that people aren't like churning really fast. Um, I also wouldn't start with like a yearly membership because um, that might be, um, you might not want to do this for a year. So the test that you're also doing is like whether this is the thing that you want to do. So if you're just starting it um, and you sell yearly memberships and then in the fourth month, you're like, this is not a priority. I hate this. I don't want to be on Zoom. I don't want to be in like typing in, in the, the forum. Um, it, it's a test for like what you, where you want to spend your time to. So unless you're sure about that, I wouldn't sell yearly memberships from the beginning. Um, so here is what that looks like, and that'll also be in your uh, worksheet. <laughs> She's something. Michelle said, uh, I knew Tatiana's name looked familiar, just realized I received her newsletter. Um, but yeah, there are a few more questions there that I'll, I'll talk about at the end. Um, yeah, thank you, Gisha. Um, so, okay. So here is the model that um, you all are gonna do for yourselves. Um, here again is dreamers and doers. And what this, like after you've heard me go on and on about each of these um, pieces of the business model, again, like this is what it looks like for dreamers and doers. Um, and then I just wanna share some um, kind of best practices as you're writing this. Um, and a couple of these are already mentioned, um, but bas basically these are like some guidelines to think about as you're writing it out. So one, it should answer basic questions about how your business works and makes money. So there shouldn't be like a question about um, how something will work. Like the whole thing should be encompassed in that statement. Um, again, it should not be in marketing speak. This should just sound like you wrote it for yourself in your journal and not fancy. Um, and then you should also be able to execute this version of it with your current resources, meaning like without hiring a hundred people uh, in six to eight weeks. So what is like the smallest possible business model that you can kind of create now? And with that, like if you're starting from scratch, again, think about those smaller versions of your community that you can launch. Maybe it's a challenge, maybe it's like a short online course, maybe it's something that involves community but is not like all community. Um, and then it should also like feel a little bit scary. Like you should feel like, oh, I don't know if I can, if I'll be able to do this. Um, I don't know how all these pieces will work, um, but I know that it's possible. Um, so, yeah, I'm gonna give you, gonna give you uh, five minutes to do this for yourselves because we're running a little bit late. Um, and then when you're ready, I'd love for you to put the, the business model in the chat so that we can see each other's um, and then we'll go from there. So did I say eight minutes, five minutes? So five minutes, right? So 47 past the hour, we'll come back together.
Okay. Um, so I'd love to um, hear from a few people and also have you uh, share what you wrote in the chat. Let me stop sharing. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go through um, just a few more things um, and then I'll leave all the questions and all the sharing for, for the end, just so we have time to get through everything. Can you see it? Yeah. Um, so you now should have, um, like a hypothesis of what your, your business model is. The next step to this is to pick the, the, the pieces where you weren't sure about, isolate those pieces and validate those pieces. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly share what that process is. Um, and there's a lot more detail in these steps, but just so you get an idea of what um, you can do. So you start with, currently like what your hypothesis is. And then you pick the riskiest part. So maybe you're not sure about the channels and how you're gonna attract people. Maybe you're not exactly sure if those are exactly who your members are gonna be. Um, and then you design an experiment to, uh, to test that specific piece of your business model and try to isolate it so that you're not changing multiple things at a time. Um, and an experiment, especially at the early stages, uh, what I recommend is that you just talk to people. Um, so just have a, a chat with like those specific people who you're trying to help um, and try to validate the piece that you're, uh, that you're thinking about. Um, and then before you talk to them, write a very clear hypothesis of what you think is gonna happen when you talk to them and have a way to validate that as a yes or a no. So if I talk to five people, at least two will bring up this problem on their own. So that's a way to kind of to validate whether you've picked the right problem. Um, and then after you do this, you do this round of testing, um, you edit your business model based on what you learn. And sometimes you'll learn things that are outside of that particular uh, piece of it. So maybe you didn't learn that much about the problem, but you're like, actually, I was talking to the wrong people. So I have to change who the members are. Um, and from there, you move into, um, you move to the next step, which is like, okay, now I feel a little bit better about that part. Now I need to test new channels. Uh, now the riskiest part is what my community experience is actually going to be. So maybe you move to testing that part. And that's kind of what the, the validation process um, ends up being, and it's it starts with that statement that you wrote. Um, so before um, I take questions and we go through to this next part, um, I just want to kind of connect back like what I'm talking about here because I know it's like overwhelming and it's a lot of stuff. So I just want to connect back to the rest of the work I do and um, how it kind of comes together for you to eventually build. Um, a profitable community business. So I work with founders like Geisha and uh, like she said, founder therapy and also like helping with all the different parts of um, a community business. And I also, um, after doing a couple of betas, I'm like launching an online course that covers all these different pieces of uh, launching and sustaining a, a community business. And these are, this is like what the curriculum of the course looks like. This is like what um, you learn through the course. And um, just to like connect it back to what we did today, all of these things go deeper into the different parts of your business model. Um, so you'll see here like which parts the, the different uh, pieces connect back to. Um, so that's kind of what I do not just in the course, but um, when I'm working with founders one-on-one, -on -one, um, we often kind of, when they're 
going through a transition, we often come back to this statement as a way to kind of be like, okay, where's the problem here? How can we identify where this is going? Um, so this is what I do and this is where uh, my course is gonna go. And I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm excited about it because um, it's another meta thing. So it's like building a community and building a course as I'm teaching people how to build their own community. So it's like a fractal that I'm really excited to do that. Um, the course starts uh, September 28th. Um, but regardless of whether you're interested in working with me, um, I want to be a resource for you in any way that I can. Um, so this is my email. Um, let me put my Calendly link in the chat. Um, and on my website, you'll see uh, links to everything. Let me also put the course. This is buildacommunitybusiness.com is the course. Um, so if you wanna find out more about that, uh, but regardless of whether um, like you're ready to take the course, or if you wanna hire me, um, Dreamers and Doers is very special to me. So if I can help you in any way, feel free to DM me uh, on there. Feel free to send me an email um, and, or book a meeting with me via Calendly because I want to help you. Um, and that's it. And I'd love to take questions. We don't have as much time as I thought we would have, but you know, it always happens. <laughs> I wonder what came up for people as they went through the exercises and if anything um, anything kind of clicked or didn't click as they were going through it, um, through the business model pieces. Gisha, sorry, you were saying something. But what I found the most interesting was when you said, don't do uh, annual, do quarterly or monthly. I was like, okay, fine, that's easy enough to change. So I, I was looking at doing a launch. So I already have a small community on Facebook, but I didn't grow it large because I know it is very difficult to transfer it off of Facebook, which has always been the plan. So, but I grew my email list to about 10X what my group is. So that's the goal is to try to get them over to the paid platform, have paid people in a free part as well on the platform, but definitely a paid. And so I beta test a lot of this last year. Um, so this has been really good to light my fire for the end of 2021. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Um, someone had asked about free and paid communities. Um, so I think it's definitely possible to transition a a free community to a paid community, but I would not start that way on purpose because you end up creating two different communities. Um, like the people who are interested in the free community are not necessarily the people who are interested in your paid community. So if you, if you are doing both or if you do wanna do both, the way that I would structure that and think about it is thinking about it from their perspective, like the user's perspective, um, what is the journey that you're taking them on? Like, what is the goal that your community is helping them solve? And then what is like the, the mile marker in between that, um, that kind of gets them deeper into that journey. And that's when they purchase from you. So then you have to make sure that everything that comes after that deepening piece um, is only in the paid community. And like your, the, your function of your free community is just getting them up to a point where they're ready to go a little bit deeper. And in order for them to go a little bit deeper, they have to uh, invest either more money, more time. They have to signal that they're ready to go a little bit deeper. Um, so you're designing this journey that goes from them like, oh, I might be interested in this. I, this might be a problem that I have. And that's kind of what you're, educating them about in the free community. And then in the paid community, you're more solving that problem for them. But think about it from their perspective, not your perspective. 
So can you, sorry, that was my question. Um, can you give me an example of that? I mean, for me, I don't have a community yet, but um, I'm in the process of building a community for um, eating disorder recovery. And so I'm trying to find what that onboarding would look like, right? So, and then I'm in the process of trying to finalize this book. And so it's like, do I do, it's like the chicken or the egg. Do you do the book or do you start the community? And do you start a free community? So you get people onboarded because the community doesn't make sense if there's not, you know, people on board talking and, you know, talking through their recovery and things like that. So I don't know if you can touch on that a little bit. Um, yeah, so I would first think about it from their perspective and think about like what those mile markers are. And I'll give you an example of a client that I have that um, her community is about is for people who are having trouble in their uh, romantic relationships, like either they're married and they're having some kind of trouble there. And she has a free Facebook community that leads into her paid uh, circle community. And the, the whole point of the Facebook community, what we figured out is that people need to take responsibility that if their relationship is not going well, they are also a part of that. So her mile marker is responsibility. So once you get to the point where you realize like, oh, this is something that I can change, then you're ready to potentially go deeper and go into the paid community. So uh, responsibility in general, I think is a good thing to brainstorm around. Um, it might be the same for, for your community, but obviously in a different topic. Um, and then it's all education, getting them up to the point where it's like, now you're ready to take this deeper journey and go into the paid side. Um, so that can happen through your book or that can happen through different parts, but you're, you're uh, taking them through that journey. Um, I think we're almost at time and we're gonna end on time. Um, but I just wanna put my Calendly again because I would love to meet all of you. And I highly encourage you to book a time with me, even if it's just to like brainstorm this stuff and chat about it. Um, I really, really appreciate everyone coming. Yeah, this is phenomenal. Thank you so much. I could just see like all the brains, like, it, like <laughs> so insightful, even doing it for a while or a newbie, like so many amazing, um, so much amazing information that you shared. Um, and I was speaking for everyone. I'm already seeing the chat. Everyone's like super excited. Thank you so much, Tatiana. And yes, you can redrop in because it's easy to get lost, but you just did. Okay. Um, take her up on that offer. Um, definitely check out your course. If, if that's her course, if that's relevant for you, check out her newsletter. It's phenomenal. Uh, thank you everyone who dialed in and thank you, especially Tatiana for sharing um, the, your heart and knowledge with us. It was fantastic.